Hey everybody, welcome back. And today we're going to paint a crankbait. Uh, this is something I've been doing for, I don't know, almost a year now. And uh, it was just something I, I, I saw online, I read about, and I thought would be kind of something fishing related that I could do when uh, I couldn't go fishing. So uh, before we get into painting the crankbait, I'm going to kind of show off a little bit and show you some of the baits that I painted over the last year. These are some of my favorite designs uh, that I've painted so far. And uh, like I said, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but uh, here's a uh, baby bass and a lipless. This one it was actually a cheap crankbait I bought out of the bargain bin at Walmart, and I sanded it down and repainted it. But uh, you can get some decent looking baits even if you don't have a whole lot of artistic skill and my airbrush I bought at Hobby Lobby and it is a Neo for Iwata uh, it's not actually an Iwata apparently it's made in China for them to sell as their entry level brush uh, I bought it at Hobby Lobby. I think the regular price was $79.99, but Hobby Lobby always has this 40% off coupon you can get online, and so I got it for a little under 50 bucks. A hair dryer. You'll see that hair in a little bit. This is actually the uh, the hair dryer my now ex-girlfriend gave me when she bought a new one. So I mean, it's just any old hair dryer. Uh, we're going to use that to to set the the paint between coats. I got this little guy from Harbor Freight for about three bucks, maybe four bucks. Uh, it came with a magnifying glass on it. I took that off. You don't need it. Uh, just basically a little base with a couple of alligator clips on it. And uh, the paints. This is where you can really start spending some money because these paints are kind of pricey. All right, so here's my bait and you can see I've taped up the bill with just some regular masking tape now I'm gonna stick it in my holder here and I've loaded up my gun with some of this, this is Createx Wicked Colors this is an opaque white and uh, on all my baits I just I start off with a uh, base coat of white just gives me a nice base to paint all my colors on top of. Now a lot of these Createx Wicked Colors are, are good to shoot right out of the bottle. Uh, some of them need a little bit of thing. This, uh, this opaque white, I, I just shoot straight out of the bottle. But uh, one thing that I do is, after every coat of paint, uh, this is where the hair dryer comes in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set the paint with the hair dryer. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do between each color is clean out the brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, add a little bit of water into that cup. Take a paper towel. Kind of try and get most of that leftover paint out of there. And I'm just going to flush it out with water. I've got a little can. You've probably seen my drum cans before on my channel. And uh, fill that cup up with water spray it out in that can. Uh, just keep flushing it out until you get all that paint out. I've got some airbrush cleaner and uh, this is this is a Createx product also and uh, I'll use it sometimes. Most time I'm just going to flush it out with water
that's just going to set that paint and get us ready for the next coat. Now, since this is going to be a baby bass pattern, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a coat of a pearlescent white on the bottom half of this. Now, this is also a Createx, uh, and it's a pearlized white. And I've just got a little bit mixed up in this little bottle that I've got thinned up already. I'll shake it up real good. I bought a bunch of these little bottles on Amazon and uh, they're really handy for uh, thinning some of the paints that need thin, some of the pearlescent and some of the metallic colors really need thin before you can shoot them. Uh, so I just thin some in this bottle so I don't have to thin uh, two or three drops at a time every time I want to use the paint. So uh, I've got some of the pearl white loaded up and uh, I'm really only going to shoot this on the bottom half of this bait because the top half is going to be covered with other colors anyway. You probably can't see it on camera but that that pearl white really makes a difference. It just gives it that kind of shimmer. We're going to clean the brush again. Now generally I like to go from the lightest colors to the darkest colors. There's, there's a couple of exceptions to that you might see in one of the videos coming up. But uh, next thing we're going to use is that uh, bright pearl green. Now this is a, a US Art Supply airbrush colors. And this is another one that I just use straight out of the bottle. I don't need to thin it. Uh, I'm just got to shake it up really good. And uh, we don't need very much of this at all. Just a few drops. I'm going to put the cap on this. Just a few drops down into here. Like I said, they, these little bottles, they last forever. These so little paint. So I'm going to take this uh, pearl green and uh, I'm going to start maybe a little over halfway up the side of the lure and uh, give it a good coat. I really like this bright green pearl. It looks like it's too bright now, but once we layer on the other green, it's going to look pretty good. I, I use this color a lot. This next color I'm going to use is uh, also a Createx. It's uh, one of their Wicked colors, and it is detail moss green I, I love this color I use it all the time I've got a uh, one of my small little bottles from Amazon uh, this is one of them that I have to thin to shoot so I've got a small little bottle already pre-thinned just gonna shake it up add a little add a few drops to the airbrush and uh, we're going to start on the back of the lure and uh, kind of uh, go down and cover most of that last color. Just going to back it up a little bit. And we're going to kind of just try to layer this a little bit and uh, try and get that effect that we want. get a good coat right along down the back of this bait and then down along the spine. I'm kind of letting a little bit of that overspray kind of fade down over the sides too. So 
So I think that we're about done with the airbrush part of this. So what I got here is just a little piece of art sponge. I'm going to take one. This is a black paint. It's another Createx paint. And uh, it's also in one of my little bottles, pretty thin. I'm just going to put like one or two drops down here. And uh, I'm going to dip this little piece of sponge in there. And then I'm going to blot it off on some cardboard. Take this bait and that is pretty much what I was shooting for. Do the same thing on the other side. And this just kind of takes some practice. I'm not saying that I'm the best at it, but I've kind of got it down to where I get that pattern that I'm looking for. I think I'm going to hit this side a little bit more. So you can kind of see that like large mouth bass pattern. And you can just kind of play around with it. Uh, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Now one of the last things I'm going to do before I put the clear coat on is uh, put eyes in it. I'm going to use these eyes today. These are uh, quarter inch molded 3D lure eyes. They're from Lure Parts Online. I've used a knife blade to put these on. I'm just going to use a little screwdriver today. Just because that's what I have handy. Just going to line that up there. Grab another one with the screwdriver. Line it up. And then I'm just going to kind of press them in there and get them to stick real good. We're going to cover those up with epoxy so they're not going to go anywhere. I'm sure there's lots of brands of epoxy that you can use or other clear coats. But uh, what I've been using is a Devcon 2 ton epoxy. So I got these little cups on Amazon also. I remember I got like a hundred or, or something in it for not very much. And this is what I use to mix the epoxy and you don't need to use this. You can use anything, you know, just something you can mix that epoxy in. But uh, you can see this is, uh, this is what I got. This is what I clear coat with. It's a uh, Devcon 2 ton epoxy. I use these little cheap disposable paint brushes. I think I bought this bag of 30 at Walmart for like a dollar or maybe two dollars. And it's just uh, equal parts of the clear and the hardener. And with this cup, then we're going to mix it up really good and then we are Pretty much just going to paint it on this bait. I've actually made way more than I need for this one bait. So once we get this all mixed up, I just paint it on. I'll usually just go ahead and hold on to this by the bill. Yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some right around these eyes. Make sure you get these eyes nice and covered. You don't have to 
his eyes coming out. The second place I hit is right around these little eyelets where the hooks are going to go. Make sure you get all these little holes and, and spots around those. Uh, and then I'm just going to paint this stuff on and get a nice even coat because this epoxy over the whole thing. And uh, it's going to go on kind of thick. As you can see, I'm just going to, now that i got a good coat over the entire bait, I'm just going to kind of take long strokes from front to back to kind of smooth everything out. And just kind of go over the whole thing and make sure you don't have any, uh, any low spots or any bare spots in that epoxy coating. And uh, it probably doesn't really show up on the camera. But uh, every time you run that brush over it, you just see these big brush strokes and you think, oh, this is going to look terrible. But then you leave it set for a second and it just kind of smooths itself back over. Now, if you want to add any uh, sparkle to it, any glitter, this is the time to do it. And the way I do that is that uh, once I think I got a good clear coat on it, and I'm happy with that clear coat, I will take some glitter and I'll add it to that epoxy that I have left over in the cup. Uh, so this is black glitter that I got at Walmart. And you just need a tiny little bit. I'm going to take the screwdriver and just kind of take just a tiniest little bit. I don't think that I will ever use that container up. You know, it was a couple bucks at Walmart. Uh, so I'm just going to take that, put that little bit of glitter in there, and mix that up. Once I get that mixed in there really good, I'm going to uh, add this epoxy with the glitter in it to the uh, spots that I want glitter on the bait. And in this case, I'm going to put some along the back. This epoxy is starting to set up already. I may have put just a little bit too much hardener in it. I'm going to put some just along the sides. And I'm going to put just a little bit right here on the gills. Here we go. We're going to set this up. I've seen a lot of people who you, who have built uh, turners or rotate this while, while that epoxy hardens. But... Uh, I honestly haven't had a lot of trouble with that epoxy sagging while it was hardening. Uh, I've just, uh, what I've done is I've just put them back on, on the little stand and uh, and I've not had any problems with it. But, uh, you know, depending on what type of epoxy you use or, or what other type of clear coat you use, you know, you may need to do something like that. But, like I said, with the, with the DevCon 210 epoxy, I just put them back on the stand and uh, wait an hour or two until they uh, set. And uh, so it probably only takes about an hour or maybe two hours until that, that epoxy is set enough to where you can handle it and touch it. And then, then the next step is going to be we're going to add on some hooks and uh, then it's going to be ready for fishing. So here's the, the finished product. I still don't have hooks on it, but uh, I wanted to get a, a shot of it with some decent lighting. Uh, I'm going to put a, a couple more of these uh, videos up about painting crankbaits here in the next couple weeks, and I promise I'm going to keep them shorter. Uh, once you've seen this one, I can kind of skip through some of the brush cleaning and, uh, and hair dryer stuff. So uh, I'm going to try and keep them as short as possible and just kind of go over the, uh, the colors and the, and the layering on each of the patterns that I like to paint. But if you like this video, then go ahead and uh, hit that thumbs up and give me a like. And if you want to keep up on those videos and, and all my other stuff, then uh, hit that subscribe button. And uh, feel free to put something down in the comments if you have any questions 
or comments or suggestions, then uh, put all that down there. And thanks for watching.